Hello, this is Darnice, and welcome back into Dr. Darnice's House of Religion, Magic, and Conjure. I've got my reading glasses on today because I'm going to be reading out something uh, on this, the 4th of July, 2021. And you might say, what's the 4th of July got to do with anything? Well, I'm going to help remember our ancestor, uh, Frederick Douglass, as he addressed a group of white people back in 1852 with his famous speech, what to the slave is the 4th of July. Secondly, I want to read from his own uh, narrative, his own uh, autobiography of the time he went to the hoodoo doctor, the root doctor, the conjure man, to get assistance when he was trying to um, run away from the lash of the white man trying to beat him. So, um, yeah, so it's a little bit of a different episode, but uh, July, here it is July 4th, 2021, and we are still in America fighting for the right to be fully free, to be, as I like to say, both emancipated and free in these United States. So let me just uh, start here with a little quote from Frederick Douglass's speech, uh, July 5th, 1852, and he says, your high independence only reveals the immeasurable distance between us. The blessings in which you this day rejoice are not enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought light and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice. I must mourn. Again, July 4th, 18, July 5th, sorry, 1852. Imagine the courage it took for this black man to stand in front of white people on a day they're celebrating independence and to say, what to the slave is the 4th of July, right? The hypocrisy. How do you celebrate freedom and liberty and justice for all and yet hold people in bondage, right? That took a lot of courage for him back in the day. I mean, it's dangerous now. Anyway, so the second thing I said I wanted to do was to continue to um, pay honor to Frederick Douglass by reading from his narrative, right? The life of Frederick Douglass as he has written it and the time he went to the conjure doctor or the root doctor for help. Okay, so on to the glasses. Uh, okay, uh, I, so he has run away and he's now having to come back to the plantation anticipating being beaten for trying to get around this beating, right, that he feels like he may be beaten to death at this point. So he says, I spent the day mostly in the woods, having the alternative before me to go home and be whipped to death or stay in the woods and be starved to death. That night I fell in with Sandy Jenkins, a slave with whom I was somewhat acquainted. Sandy had a free wife who lived about four miles from Mr. Kobe's, and it being Saturday, he was on his way to see her. I told him my circumstances, and he very kindly invited me to go home with him. I went home with him and talked this whole matter over and got his advice as to what course it was best for me to pursue. I found Sandy an old advisor. He told me with great solemnity, I must go back to Kobe, but that before I went, I must go with him into another part of the woods where there was a certain route, which if I would take some of it with me, Carrying it always on my right side would render it impossible for Mr. Covey or any other white man to whip me. He said he had carried it for years, and since he had done so, he had never received a blow and never expected to while he carried it. I at first rejected the idea that the simple carrying of a root in my pocket would have any such effect, as he had said, and was not disposed to take it. But Sandy impressed the necessity with much earnestness, telling me it could do no harm if it did no good. To please him, I at length took the root and, according to his direction, carried it upon my right side. This was Sunday morning. I immediately started for home, and upon entering the yard gate, out came Mr. Colby on his way to meet him. He spoke to me very kindly, bade me drive the pitch from a lot nearby, and passed on towards the church. Now, this singular conduct of Mr. Colby really made me begin to think that there was something in the root which Sandy had given me, and had it been on any other day than Sunday, I could have attributed the conduct to no other cause than the influence of that root, and as it was, I was half inclined to think the root to be something more than I had at first taken it to be. All went well till Monday morning. 
On this morning, the virtue of the root was fully tested. And so then he goes, Frederick Douglass goes on in his writing here to talk about a, a fight, a scuffle that happens with Mr. Colby, the white man who he's trying to avoid, right? And he says they get into this, scuffy, this scuffle, but um, he, in the end, is not uh, overcome. So he says, uh, um, the whole six months afterwards, this is after the fight that they eventually had on that Monday, the whole six months afterwards that I spent with Mr. Covey, he never laid the weight of his finger upon me in anger. He would occasionally say he didn't want me, he didn't want to get hold of me again. No, thought I, you need not, for you will come off worse than you did before. This battle with Mr. Covey was the turning point in my career as a slave. It rekindled the few expiring embers of freedom and revived within me a sense of my own manhood. It recalled the departed self-confidence and inspired me again with a determination to be free. The gratification afforded by the triumph was a full compensation for whatever else might follow, even death itself. He can only understand the deep satisfaction which I experienced, who has himself repelled by force the bloody arm of slavery. I felt as I never felt before. It was a glorious resurrection from the tomb of slavery to the heaven of freedom. My long crushed spirit rose, cowardice departed, bold defiance took its place, and I now resolved that however long I might remain a slave in form, the day had passed forever when I could be a slave in fact. I did not hesitate to let it be known of me that the white man who expected to succeed in whipping me must also succeed in killing me. From this time I was never again what might be called fairly whipped, though I remained a slave four years afterwards. I had several fights, but was never whipped. So, um, just as a, a recap here, uh, Frederick Douglass finds himself in a very desperate situation, right? He's already run away from this man before, the slave owner or over here before. And um, he finds himself, you know, having to go back. There's really nothing else for you to do. If you are in slavery and you are off the plantation, you, you gotta go back somewhere. So he finds himself in this impossible situation um, you know, and he said, well, I found myself having the alternative before me to go home and be whipped to death or stay in the woods and be starved to death. And then he fell in with Sandy Jenkins, right? And so he had heard of Sandy Jenkins, who was a root doctor or a conjure man, as, you know, they're alternatively called. And this man, Sandy Jenkins, told him, here's a root. Now, we don't know what the root was. We don't know if, what it was that he gave him. But we do know that there was a belief system already in place. And this is why, when I talk about hoodoo, I say it's an African-American form of a magical system because it's something that we created for resistance and empowerment here on these American shores within the context of slavery. So it was something that was understood to be a powerful tool, it meaning conjure, the ability to um, use herbs, to use, to call upon spirit in such a way to help us survive, right, to help us ward off the things that would oppress us in, in various situations. And so we used what we had, right, in our hands. We used what we had. And one of the things that we had as African people is a knowledge of different herbs, different roots, Right? How to use the force of natural forces, earth, wind, and fire, and air. Right? How do you use those things to your for your own survival, for your own empowerment, for your resistance, for your overall protection and well-being? And we brought that with us, and we reformulated here in the United States to to meet this very specific challenge. Um, so. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you all uh, on this July 4, 2021, uh, because the 4th of July, we're still fighting in America as black people. We're still fighting in America to be both emancipated and free. And we're still dealing with the hypocrisy of a people who would tell us that this is a meritocracy and everybody has equal rights and it's a level playing field. And yet, we still live with the with the discriminations and the oppressions that we do on a daily basis, right? Just the, even the small, the microaggressions of 
being um, uh, being suspicious all being under suspicion all the time and having the justice system work against us this is the daily stuff that we deal with you know not to mention the native american people who you know were nearly wiped out entirely by this apparently this this nation that said revalue freedom and justice for all and yet the nation itself was founded upon genocide and slavery and America's, America is still dealing with the reckoning. This is a time of reckoning, right, that, that white Americans, some white Americans are having a very difficult time come to terms with. So, you know, we can go back to these words of Frederick Douglass from 1852 and say, remember Frederick Douglass said in 1852, the 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, but I mourn. Right, and, and you know, and I'm just convinced that this thing called America could be great, right? But it's not already great. It means that we, as the citizens of this country, have to make it great. Unfortunately, it ends up being people like black people, Native American people, Hispanic people, Asian people, who are the ones who whose blood flows in the street to make it great, right? That, that, that seems the way of this country. But anyway, go on out and have some barbecue or whatever you're going to do to, you know, I don't know, kick back and do whatever you do on 4th of July or watch a movie or something, whatever you're going to do. But maybe you have the benefit of a barbecue or maybe a pool or something or having people over at the house. Whatever you're going to do, enjoy your day. And um, that's all I have for you. If you'd like to hear, you know, have more of these kind of things with me reading various things and uh, leave that as a comment or whatever you thought about the 4th of July, either the 4th of July in 1852 or the 4th of July in 2021. I'd love to hear your comments. So don't forget to like, to share, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you think and um, have a good day. Bye for now.